Hi everybody! Today's project is going to be a toned charcoal landscape where you're going to begin by toning your paper and you'll be subtracting out the lights with erasers. So you'll do that with some kneaded erasers or your harder dust-free erasers. Okay, so we'll be doing a landscape. I want to see your demonstration of atmospheric perspective. So you're showing me that you're understanding atmospheric perspective. So essentially that the darkest, brightest values will be in the things closest to you, more detail, harder edges, right? And then as things go back in space, we start to go more towards a mid light gray, less detail, softer edges. All right, so you're gonna be making these landscapes and you're also going to insert at least two new things into the landscape. And you'll use some linear perspective to scale that object going back in space. So I use this raptor, this little dino figurine that I have. You can select any object of your choice. Um, you just have to do at least two things. It could even be the same thing but you need it twice in the landscape and you need it to be um, something in the foreground. So putting this object in the foreground where it's gonna have more detail happening and then also something in more in the background or middle ground and that's where less detail, less intense value is going to be happening. So essentially you're inserting something in and you're applying atmospheric perspective to these objects you're inserting into the landscape. So let's get started and we'll start off by reviewing materials, then go over toning your paper, and then into the whole process for the drawing. Before we get started toning our paper, let's talk about our tools that we'll be using a little bit. And you can tell my tools have been uh, used quite a bit already with the charcoal. So we have our chamois. We'll be using this to spread around the charcoal, um, both to tone it and if we want to blend out or even remove charcoal in areas, you can press down pretty hard with the chamois, it's gonna bring up some charcoal. Our blending stump. Um, now again, mine is quite saturated with charcoal. You can sand this down, you can cut it down to get back to a really clean stump, um, but this will be great for blending, especially in detail areas. Um, our kneaded eraser, mine has quite a bit of charcoal in it, but I can uh, go ahead and knead it out and it'll be still great to use, especially for erasing in um, areas that you want to be softer. I have my harder dust-free eraser, which I have cut into different segments, uh, even these kind of triangular segments, which I love to use, because then I can go in, make these fine lines, get into small areas. So feel free to adapt your art supplies to your needs, um, such as cutting down this eraser into shapes that you want to use course a variety of charcoal here. As we begin planning out our drawings we'll be using the uh, vine charcoal. The vine charcoal is very light um, and you can feel the difference in weight as you pick up compressed charcoal versus the vine charcoal. Vine charcoal is great for planning drawings out so it's going to be a much kind of lighter value and you can essentially just erase it out with your finger if you don't like something that you have uh, put down. Once we get into parts that we, uh, parts of the drawing that we really um, want to keep and sort of solidify a bit more, then we'll get into more of our compressed charcoal. So we have our compressed charcoal pencils and these have different boldness. So one is medium and one I believe is hard. Yes, this is hard. Um, so the hard charcoal is going to be lighter actually, just like a harder pencil, harder graphite. The medium is going to be softer and bolder in its value. And then we have also the uh, Conte, which is compressed charcoal with some wax in it. it, makes it kind of stiffer, but it also goes very dark. And a uh, darker charcoal stick. And now this is a 4B, so it's quite bold. Um, so I also have my sanding block here, which still has 
the charcoal dust from when I um, sharpened my charcoal uh, pencils and I'm going to use both this dust for my charcoal pencils and my 4B um, softer kind of charcoal stick. You could also use the Conte too, but I'm going to use that to tone this uh, surface. So we're going to be putting down a mid-tone of charcoal and then we'll of course be adding darker darks with our, our compressed charcoal and then we'll be also lifting out the lights or subtracting the lights uh, from our image using both these harder erasers and the kneaded erasers. Okay, so we're ready to start toning our paper. Now, what I'm going to do is tap off all this charcoal dust. So you don't have to just throw this dust away. You can use it to tone your drawings. It's really excellent for that, okay? Um, so we'll even just start off using that for a moment and see what that's like. So you can see that can add a nice tone. You want to try to work that dust into your paper. And I'm just doing it in this swirling motion with my chamois. Eventually your chamois also gets loaded with charcoal and you can even just kind of use your charcoal saturated chamois to tone paper. Uh, now, of course, you could also, there's, there's ways of cleaning your chamois, but I actually like to have some really saturated chamois in order to do this. So you don't have to jump at sort of cleaning the chamois. It can still be a very useful tool with all that tone in there. Okay, so I'm just trying to get a relatively smooth tone down. And I want to go a bit darker so that when I'm um, subtracting my lights that, that I can uh, really have more of a, a bit of contrast. I don't want to go too dark. I don't want to go super, super dark so that when I'm trying to put in my core shadows, my occlusion shadows, they're not really showing up. I want to aim for more of a mid-tone. So I want to put down a bit more tone and I'm laying this flat down, so using the whole side of it. You could also do this with a piece of your Conte as well. The vine charcoal you don't necessarily want to use to tone because it's so light. So we'll put some of that looks dark, right? But then it can go, it kind of just wipes right off. So really you want to use your compressed charcoal to tone. You just kind of want to make sure you're not going too intensely from the beginning. So the goal is kind of a mid-tone. So then again, I'm going to go in this circular motion. And again, you want to work that dust into the paper. <clears throat> and then at the end, you can just shake off the excess dust either into if you have a container that you use to collect your charcoal dust and reuse, you could do that. Or you can just uh, shake off that excess into the garbage. Now, if there's a bit of texture here, that's okay. You want it to be relatively smooth, but you don't have to overthink this. If there can still be some kind of swirling texture and that can actually be kind of interesting to have. And I do want to get this corner a little bit more saturated. And there we have it. There we have a toned surface to work on now. 
So now what I'll be doing is um, going into mapping out my drawing in Vine Charcoal. Then I can start to pop in some shadow masses and subtract out some lights. And just real quick, I'm gonna show you the concept of subtracting your lights. So you're pulling the light back out of the paper. So you can go back in softly or softly with a kneaded eraser or you can go in and make it much brighter with this stiffer, harder, dust-free eraser. Okay, everyone, so I have started mapping in my landscape. I'm working from a photo reference, but I'm also, and part of this assignment for all of you, is going to be to insert um, some type of object, and it's going to be an object of your choice. I'm going to be in inserting this little dino figurine. I'm going to do, uh, you need to do two things, and I'm going to do one raptor here in the foreground and one in the background. So you need something in the foreground closer to us. It's going to have more intense values. It's going to show this idea of atmospheric perspective and something going further back where it's getting uh, going more towards that kind of mid gray, less intense values. So anyway, we're also going to be taking in some ideas from our last uh, perspective drawing in order to get a sense of how to uh, replicate something of the same scale, or you can even, you know, prox you, you can take this, this scale, go, put it back in space using some linear perspective tools, and you can also go, oh, maybe I want this thing to be twice as large back in space, but we can start off by um, some tools from linear perspective using uh, scaling one object. So first what I'm going to do is I am going to identify my um, horizon line. And my horizon line, I'm gonna say, is about right here. So remember, horizon line is eye level. It's where things are going to be receding back to that horizon line. Now you can also have things in front of the horizon line. So you, in this case, I also do have things in front of the horizon line, like these trees and foliage and whatnot. And this path wraps around this mountain. So the horizon line is gonna be obscured by things, but I can still be putting it that um, into my picture as a, as a reference to use uh, in order to scale things. And I'm gonna continue this horizon line off the sides of my paper so I can actually put, I'm gonna put some vanishing points at the edges here. Now I'm not being super exact here. Um, you know, they, these could probably go out even further so that things, that we avoid distortion, but I'm just gonna put them right there for now. Um, and if it's not super exact, that's okay. We'll still be kind of using the same idea, okay? All right, so I've established some vanishing points. Now um, I'm gonna start by drawing a raptor, more kind of in the foreground. I'm just gonna start very generally, okay? So we'll start drawing this raptor in here. And again, I'm going to begin just very generally show you how to place these things, get a sense of scale. Then I'm gonna continue working on the rest of my still life and um, I'll start refining these uh, dinosaurs as I start refining everything else. So still kind of working in that process of going from general to specific. Okie dokie. So, getting this raptor in here, and I'm working in Vine Charcoal right now. Um, again, because I can, if I don't like this hand, well, I can just erase that really easily. 
and I'll go over that once I know that I like the placement. I can go back over that with my compressed charcoal, either my charcoal pencils or my Conte. Okay, so I'm getting that general shape, right? I'm not gonna go into the teeth yet. I wanna make sure I have the big idea down first. And you also need the general things going on in your landscape. You definitely need that horizon line. You need those vanishing points established. You, can, you also want those big shapes of other things happening. Doesn't mean you have to draw the, the little bits of grass in, in the foreground. In fact, you shouldn't do that right away. But you wanna know the larger shapes that you're dealing with. Okay, so I had my raptor. Now, to scale it back in space, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the top of my raptor and I'm gonna do a guideline going back to this vanishing point. And you could grab a ruler, I'm just going to estimate that, okay? Off to that vanishing point. Now, same thing from down below. I'm gonna go from down here, I'm gonna go off, make a guideline going off to this vanishing point over in here, okay? So now, let's say I want to do another raptor going farther back in space, like right here. And I want that raptor to be the same size. Well, now, these this kind of cone here is telling me that a raptor of this size would be you know, the, this big back over in here, but that's gonna be the same same scale. So it's showing us what that scale is translating to going back in space, okay? Um, now I'm gonna start to, I think I will do this next raptor, perhaps right here. Okay, so I'm gonna put it right there because I kind of like that compositionally. Now, let's say that you want to do a raptor back over in here though. Now what you could do is you could even first kind of establish these guidelines, right? And then if you want to put another raptor right here and make sure it's the same scale, well, you could start from points right here and you could take this point and go back to this vanishing point over here, okay? Going back over in there. Okay, same thing. Bring this point back over to that vanishing point. And then you could have this other cone telling you what that scale would be going back over in here. Okay, so you can kind of replicate that wherever you want to in order to get something of the same scale. All right, so now I'm gonna finish drawing out these raptors, uh, establishing everything, and then I'll be getting into the shadows and light. Begin by laying in your drawing with vine charcoal. The vine is adaptable, easy to erase, and best suited for laying in the initial drawing. Once you like where everything is, go over your vine layer with compressed charcoal. Think of the big picture values. I'm starting in my background and working my way into my foreground. Establish some major shadow masses and light masses before getting into areas of detail. All right, everyone, now I'm at a point where the general values have been established, right? The general lights, the general darks. And now this becomes a time to push and pull the space. And how you do that is you start to, you can start to go into the foreground, right? And then the foreground and in the area where you want there to be the focus, so the kind of star of your show, in this case, this raptor in the foreground, that's where you can start to have the more intense values, the more details. So I'm going in and I'm describing these little bumps that I see on this raptor. I've gone in and put in the teeth and I can refine those even more. I'm showing the texture on its skin. It has this kind of these lines and kind of wrinkles in its skin. Um, and 
the, there can also be areas you want to keep in mind the sort of light logic, right? So this raptor is actually um, in a lot of shadow, so I'm not going to be covering its body in <clears throat> in a ton of light because that wouldn't make sense with the, the scenario we're in. But still, I can go in and maybe find some areas where there could be light coming on the raptor, carve those out. And in this area of foreground, I can have more intense dark values, so deeper darks, some intensifying areas of core shadow, and bringing in more detail in terms of the, the textures I'm describing, more areas of intense light perhaps as well, okay? Um, so you're gonna have those more um, extreme things, extreme values happening and more detail that's going to make that thing start to seem like it is closer to you. Now with things in the background, that becomes an opportunity um, to start pushing things more towards kind of a mid-gray. So for example, for example, this raptor in the background over here would not have the same intense darks especially as the raptor over in here. It's not gonna have the same amount of detail. And we can even begin to do things like soften the edges, blend out the edges of the things that are in the more middle ground and background, especially things that are farther away. We can start to make those edges really soft and you're not gonna have those deep, dark values back in here because we're keeping in mind the principles of atmospheric perspective. So things that you want to come forward, more intense values, the full range of the value scale, harder edges, more detail, things that you want to push back, it's gonna start going more towards a mid-gray softer edges, less detail. So now I'm just gonna continue working on this, kind of pushing and pulling between foreground, middle ground, and background. In this stage, I'm bringing out more detail, darker darks, and brighter brights within the foreground. This is also going to give my drawing a sense of focus. I want my raptor in the foreground to be the focal point. So that is where I'm concentrating values and detail. In the middle ground and background, I want less detail and softer edges to build a sense of space. And here is my finished drawing. There's still more refining that I could do here, but I am starting to get a sense of space through the use of value, the darker values here in the foreground, the brighter values also here in the foreground, and a greater amount of detail that's pulling this, this pulling this forward, also the scale, right? And then as things go back in space, of course they start to get smaller as they recede back to the horizon line, um, but also the values start to compress more towards kind of a mid, lighter gray. If there was color here, it would also start to get bluer. You would lose warmth. Um, we're also not going to see the same level of detail as we go back in space as well. So that detail is going to start to get fuzzier and fuzzier and fuzzier as more atmosphere is between the viewer and that thing going back in space, right? So with the thing I want to pull forward, I also want to sharpen those edges. I want to be adding more detail. I want to have more intense values. So darker darks, we can search for areas of brighter lights there as well. And then things as they're going back, you're going to start to push it more towards gray and you're going to soften or blur out those edges. So these don't have to be perfect drawings by any means, but I want to see that you're exploring and showing me an understanding of atmospheric perspective. And that comes down to value, that comes down to detail, that comes also down to the edges. Is it sharp or hard? All right, y'all. As always, email me with any questions.